Alright, it's time for another math easy. So let's now discuss a uh, more optimization example. Look at part five of this series and basically look at maximizing the area of a rectangle in a semicircle. That's basic example five. Find the area of the largest rectangle uh, that can be inscribed in a semicircle of radius r. So I'll just quickly draw what I mean. And so here's the uh, semicircle and just uh, inside the x and y coordinates here, and it's radius r. So it'd be something like this. So now there's two methods of basically solving for this one. We could use calculus and then we could also use trigonometry. I'll show you I'll show you both methods. I'll write down we'll do the first one first, which is a bit harder. So yeah, I wrote down these two methods that we could use. The first one uh, is yeah using calculus, but basically using the x and y variable in the second using trigonometry. Let's look at uh, number one first. So if we look at number one, we could go back to this graph here and does this I mean the, this uh, semicircle uh, now let's just put a a random uh, uh, rectangle inside. So that's a semicircle and we want a rectangle inside of it. And this is symmetric as this is not the scale but you get the idea. So this would be x this length and this is also x the length uh, between these two. And then this is going to be y. And then at this point here we have it's going to be x, y. And then from this number the radius is always r. So that's r is the radius. So now this area is just going to be equal to, uh, we'll just a is equal to 2x times y because there's just length times uh, length times height. So it's 2x is the length and y is the height here. So now uh, we want to get y in terms of uh, x. So we know that using Pythagoras here, this would just be, well, r squared is equal to x squared. This is an x here. This is a right angle plus y squared. So then if we rearrange this one, we're going to get y squared is equal to r squared minus x squared. Or in this case, uh, y is equal to, well, it's going to be positive because you can have a negative uh, y in this case, r squared minus x squared. Now when we plug in what we got for y, we're going to get a is equal to 2x uh, times r squared minus x squared. Now first thing to do, we have to see the domain in this one. Well, this square root can't be uh, less than zero, so then basically r squared minus x squared has to be greater than zero, and in this case, you move it around, you're gonna have r squared, x squared. So basically, x is gonna be, yeah, greater than, uh, yeah, it's gonna be greater than zero, but in this case, this one's gonna be less than r. Yeah, so because you can't have a negative uh, radius and it can't be greater than r, otherwise you're going to have a negative square root. So this is the domain in this case, well, less than or equal to. Now, like always with uh, these examples, we need to find the critical point, and that's basically looking at the derivative when it's equal to zero. So we got to go with the derivative in terms of x in this one. This one, you have to use product rule. This is going to be 2 times r squared minus x squared. So 2 times the derivative of of x and then plus 2x well times by 1 over 2 1, uh, r squared minus x squared is the derivative of this and then using chain rule minus times by 2 negative yes yeah, so times it by negative 2x now if we basically simplify this one it's going to be equal to yeah, and, uh, 2 times uh, squared r squared minus x squared minus 2x squared this is the the x is multiplying these the twos cancel you have a negative here uh, r squared divided by x squared all square root so now we could uh, use common denominator uh, just basically times this top and bottom on this side by r squared minus x squared over r squared minus x squared so we're gonna get this is gonna equal two yeah two times uh, this the square root is cancel uh, r squared minus x squared minus two x squared divided by the square root now keep simplifying this one, we're going to get over, just expand this one, we're going to get 2r squared, yeah, minus 2x squared, and, and so on. And then we keep simplifying it, uh, just subtract these like terms, we're going to get negative 4x squared. So now this is our derivative, and then we have to set it to equal to 0 to get the critical point, and that's basically when this is equal to 0, we're going to get... Oh, uh, basically the derivative here, but this is only equal to 0, well, you could cancel these out of times left and right side by this, this cancels, so we're going to get... Uh, 2r squared minus 4x squared is equal to 0. Divide the 2 out, we're going to get r squared and bring this over is equal to 2x squared. Thus, if you solve for x, you're going to get in this case, well, x squared is equal to r squared over, over 2. And then x would equal to uh, plus, well, you ignore the minus, um, 
r squared over 2. This will just equal to r over square root 2. So this is our only critical point. Now this actually, yeah, this gives the maximum area because uh, because when you look at the, the function of a, this a is equal to 2x, 2x uh, squared r squared minus x squared. And, and if you plug in at the endpoints a of 0, this equals to 0. And also a of r, if you put an r in here, you're going to get a 0 here. So then this, this has to be a maximum. Because wh what it means here is that you only have one critical point here at r square root 2. And this is... Yeah, basically this would be at r, this is at 0, so you're going to have something like this. And it's not going to be negative because, uh, yeah, this this is always going to be greater than 0. Uh, yeah, this can't be negative here. And uh, the function is continuous for this uh, domain so that you're not going to have any jump or anything. So it should be something like this. So we have that, so then we can just plug in this number inside and we're going to get our answer. So a of of r square root 2 is equal to, plug into this one here, 2 times, yeah, 2 times r divided by square root 2 times by the square root of the this one, r, this was x here, r squared, uh, then the square root cancels in this case for the 2, so uh, yeah, the square root 2 squared is 2. So now if we simplify this one, common denominator 2, 2, we're going to get this equals to uh, 2 times r square root 2 times by this one it's going to subtract we're just going to have r squared over 2 and this equals 2 2 times square root 2 and then this one's going to be well this top part's going to be r square root 2 so now we're going to get well this this is going to get 2 times r squared over 2 the t is 2 equals each other and this is going to be r squared so there is our max area so a max is equal to r squared and this is at x equals to r squared root 2. So now uh, another method, uh, this was uh, just a bit more complicated than the one I'm going to show right now. If we use trigonometry here, here we could uh, write theta or then an angle as, as the variable here. So if we draw out this uh, semicircle now, we don't need the coordinates. We're going to change coordinates to using theta in this case or, or angle. So we will draw this one out here. If we just draw a random side here, this is length, this is length r, the radius. So we'll call this angle theta. Now using trigonometry, this is just equal to r. This side is equal to r cos theta, and this one's equal to r sine theta. Because remember, uh, this side sine is just equal to opposite over adjacent. Uh, opposite over adjacent in this case, so then it just opposite would just equal sine theta r. Similar to this one is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we have these sides here, and then the um, then then the area is just going to equal two. Well, two times uh, the length in this case is just two times r cos theta. So two times r cos uh, theta. And then times it by r sine theta. That's this one right here. And this would just equal 2, well, 2 uh, times, should put the r in front. So r squared times by 2 cos theta sine theta. And now you can see the drop box link below the, for the identity. This one is just equal to sine 2 theta. So then a is just equal to r squared times by sine to theta. So now we have uh, trigonomic uh, basically air, uh, function of area. And in, in this case here we know that sine sine of x is just something like this and it's always the maximum value is going to be 1. Yeah so max is, is always going to be this one's going to be 1 here so then so sine of so yeah so sine of x max is going to be 1 this is max value. And this occurs basically at this one is pi over 2. So then if the max is 1, so then for sine this is max equals to 1, then the area is going to be max. A max is one sine, the, the, when the sine function is max, and that's going to be r squared times 1 or just r squared. So we know the area, and this occurs, number because we have to look at between, uh, between r. It, 
these these max values has to be between r or the uh, the theta value uh so what i mean by that and actually this one has to be between uh 0 and pi over 2 and this uh, this occurs basically when this is pi over 2 so then when when 2 pi is equal to pi over 2 and if we rearrange this one we're going to have pi is equal to pi over 4 and this uh, corresponds to uh, 45 degrees uh, if we look at degrees this is radian so now yeah we have the max area so max area is r squared when when pi is equal well when theta is equal to pi over 4 so we have this max area this is at pi over 4 here and that's at a 90 degrees. Well, uh, I mean, I mean 45 degrees. Well, that's uh, all for today. Remember, you can download these notes. Uh, yeah, but basically, we didn't even use calculus in this method here or differentiation. We just use straight trig, and it's much easier. Well, that's all for today. If you learned from this, remember, yeah, you can download the notes below in the Dropbox link. And uh, well, stay tuned for another math easy solution.